Can you guys hear me all right? Yeah. I can. Yeah, good to go. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. What's up? Nothing. Hey, hey. <laughs> nothing Thanks much, for man. Us. How's uh, how's co COVID treating you over there? It's not so bad. I'm going to be honest because I um, I got out of Mumbai. I think like a month and a half ago, and we're in Goa, which is near the beach. Yeah. Uh huh. So it's actually been kind of nice. I get to get out, <laughs> and, you know. And Dude, then I, emp I empathize with people in Mumbai, and I'm like, yes, lockdown is very hard. And, and all yes, that yes, stuff, yes, but, yes. But Goa is not but a bad I'm on the place. beach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah qu so, qu quarantining in Goa is a pretty good place to quarantine, I suppose. Yep. <laughs> yep. yep. We're here in California, so it's not as nice uh, in terms of COVID. Um, but, you know, America. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, on, on the bright side, I think your guy knows what he's doing, so I think you'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I want to thank you for talking to us. We've been uh, big admirers of yours for uh, since we started. I think the first thing we ever reacted to of yours was um, your "Be Stupid" speech uh, oh, at, nice. at the college, okay. um, mm -hmm. and so we were we were blown away by your your intelligence and obviously your your comedy, which is I think one of your defining characteristics of your comedy. But <clears throat> I know what you you just put out your your new special. Uh, yeah. Via Zoom that I watched uh, last night, hilarious, and it's all going Thank to a, a COVID-related um, yeah, charities, uh, correct? Four, four different charities. I mean, we we kind of wanted to hedge our bets depending on who you like. So we picked like one for kids, one for dogs, mm -hmm. one for old people, and one for doctors. Yep. In case you like kids but you hate old people, or you like dogs, <laughs> spread it around. That's great. But no, it was. Uh, yeah, it's for charity. The whole thing is for charity. And how was it? Um, obviously, because you're used to performing in front of a big crowd, uh, and we mm -hmm. we actually we did reactions via Skype for a few months when the first pandemic started, and we know that the 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 reactions you get from each other or the audience is much much different. Obviously, online with a delay and and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So how yeah. how how was it uh, doing stand up on on Zoom? Uh, it's like taking a tetanus shot. You know, it's good for you, <laughs> but you'd rather not do it. Right. right. Um, but I try and find a bright side in everything that I'm doing. So mm -hmm. for me, you know, I started out like super cranky. I was like, I don't want to do this. And, you know, uh, isn't this virus going to be over tomorrow? And then it starts to dawn on you that this is the new normal. Uh, yeah. Three words that I hate. But uh, I, I think about halfway into it like i did 45 shows in the last sort of three months for different charities and every night we'd sell like about 200 tickets or 250 tickets and we just give that money to a, a different ngo every night and then about 10 shows in i was like you know i'm uh, i mean and i talked about this in the special as well I'm now looking into my audience's lives for the first time. Mm -hmm. You know, th that's a trip as an artist, right? Because usually if you come to the arena, you're this dark mass of people and, and I'm under lights and, and it's mm -hmm. about me and my life and my swag, if you will, or whatever. But now it's pretty democratic to just all be boxes on Zoom, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> where, where, <laughs> right. uh, you know, you can see my background. I can see your background. I can see the books on your wall. I can see you know your life mm -hmm. uh so i think in that sense i'm forever changed as an artist because i've it's a privilege to be given a glimpse into your audience's life you don't take them for granted anymore and mm -hmm. was, was it weird doing mostly because i feel like most of it was improv for this special uh, whereas most of the times it yeah. feels like your, your your set is pretty polished um mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so, so was it different doing mostly just improvised but yeah. it, it's, it's, it's giving up control completely. Yeah. It, it really is because usually, you know, you're driving and, and before it goes on Netflix, it's done like 85 performances or it's done right. a world tour. You've got the economy of words down. You know what hits when. Uh, but with this, you're just like, yeah, I'm d I just have to make sure I'm in a good frame of mind yeah. at 7 p.m. And then the mm -hmm. audience is going to let me know what the show is about, uh, which is kind of a good you know it coincides with this pandemic as well right which is no matter what you do as an artist or as a professional 
you're not in charge anymore there's mm-hmm. a scientist in oxford and and somebody else in a policy maker who are going to decide when you get to do whatever you do again mm-hmm. um and you just kind of have to keep yourself in the right frame of mind until that shit happens yeah right so for me that's been the tough thing here as somebody who uh i've kind of had to like i'm like a gopher you know what i mean i keep going like i've i've, I've had to like self produce self write self create self fund and that's kind of how i've grown right yeah. so mm-hmm. if you do that and not a lot of shit is kind of handed to you you get used to feeling in control of how mm-hmm. your career is going to mm. flow yeah. so this is new having no control is uh, a lovely existential crisis that <laughs> caught on camera <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, so, yeah. good and but it it also plays into you know being uh, having being a thespian having an acting background as well this is all the proverbial okay i wasn't expecting this but i'm just going to use it i got to just i got to make the most with what i've got and uh i i'm interested to know i mean we've done obviously some research on you we we've really enjoyed you for a long time now and you were one of the first comedians not just for us but we recognize you're you're the first indian comedian to have a netflix special uh there's a lot of people in america to, mm-hmm. to so uh, what got you interested in in book you started out as an actor didn't you yeah yeah i i uh I was in an acting program in Knox College which is mm-hmm. Galesburg Illinois the mm-hmm. the mecca of civilization as we know it uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, uh Cornfield College Cornfield and mm-hmm. it was this this very like method acting program where you you sat in a circle and cried all day and talked about your feelings <laughs> and, and 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 they said shit like emote with your shoulders and stuff like that and, and, and you know uh, I, I was uh, <laughs> it was just you know year three of that and i just done like i think some i done war and peace right and and uh, i just done a shitload of chekhov and shakespeare and i was just like i was a richard pryor fan and i was a george carlin mm. fan and i was like an eddie murphy fan and and chapel show was on tv when i was in college right so then i just kind of said I'm, i printed a poster out for a show and that's what i always do like i i'll uh I'll print the poster first and I'll book the arena first and I'll announce the date first and then I'll start writing jokes just mm-hmm. so that I now know I have to do it yeah give yourself you a know, deadline that, yeah that's my thing right so yeah. I printed out a poster yeah. for uh, like in the computer lab for a show called brown men can't hump uh <laughs> there's a thing called white men can't jump and <laughs> and I book like the the college auditorium and I just put up like 100 posters everywhere and I gave myself like 4 months and then I just kind of wrote a set in 4 months which was uh dang you know it is it, a stupid thing to do in retrospect like you usually go up as as a comedian you you go up and you do 5 minutes right you know, for for like 10 people or 15 people the first time I ever did stand up I did 90 minutes for 800 people Holy did you just uh, say 90 shit yeah <laughs> right so and how did it go so, it went really well so here's the problem with that right you, you kind of it's your friends and it's a lot of inside jokes and gotcha. you're, you're taking your time and they've seen you on stage before so you get off that stage just going i'm the shit i'm amazing at this like i'm <laughs> i'm killing this cut to your dishwasher in chicago like two months later because you graduated <laughs> and you're getting booed off stage you know at an open mic and you're not you're not making two and a half minutes right uh, you know <laughs> because none of your friends are in the audience. Mm-hmm. So that's when you discover that the life of the party isn't really a comedian. It's just an artist is a comedian. Dang. That is crazy. Um so you you've actually obviously performed for both uh Americans and and Indians alike. Um yeah. What's the differences and who who gets offended easier? <laughs> who do you think? Uh, <laughs> Here's how I put it. Here's how I put it. Right? Uh <laughs> Americans are easier for play shorter sex and <laughs> Indians are tougher pl- for for play longer sex. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Like yeah. you know like Americans the first 5 minutes is like woo woo yeah amazing that's great but then they have a shorter attention span. So yeah. you, like you can't do like a a 90 minute set for americans i think right. like 45 minutes is the longest americans want to watch a comedian live 45 to an hour yeah now indians it takes like 10 minutes so 15 minutes to really fucking get them in there 
Yeah. But if you have them, they're good for like 95 minutes. Like in yeah. uh, like in the US, if I'm doing the improv, if I'm doing like, you know, the beacon or whatever you do, like I'll do an opening act, which is like 10 minutes. And then I'll go up and I'll do 65, 70, and that's your evening, right? right. In India, I'll do no opening act. Um, I'll go up and do 45 minutes. Then we'll take an interval. Uh, There's you, an interval? You go take a piss. Yeah, you, 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 you go have a drink, you, you, you take a piss, get something to eat, come back 20 minutes later, and then I'll do another 45 to an hour. Because wow. Indians just have a stamina. Wow. Yeah, I didn't wow. know there was intervals also in the stand-up. That's crazy. Guys, we watch Bollywood movies. We have yeah, to. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's what this is. Yeah. Wow. So conceptually, obviously, you write everything for yourself. Uh, Every but word. also yeah. conceptually, the Netflix specials were the concepts because all three of those are so unique and they're extremely interesting. I love all three concepts you had for those specials. Were those yours or a collaboration? No, they, they were mine. Uh, I mean, but they're also, I mean, I'm coming from like a comedy fanboy space, right? Where like the the last thing I like is when a comedian does too many specials and then he's not interesting anymore, mm -hmm. you know, because he hasn't give, given enough time for shit to happen in his life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, like I feel like really only Chappelle can keep banging them out like at a <laughs> consistently, you know, home run level. Yeah. Right. Anybody else? You get too many specials and the guy's not, you know, you're overexposing yourself. So for right. me, it, it was a clear journey, right? Which is a, uh, a broad understanding was a guy trying to cross over mm -hmm. and a guy trying to say, hey, West, here I am. Uh, and then losing it was a pure, I'm here. We're doing this. You know, right. I'm, I'm here now. I've arrived. Arrived in a, not like I've made it kind of a sense. Arrived as in a, I'm being able to do something large here now. Yeah. And then you know for india was just to say i haven't forgot where i've come from you know mm -hmm. and and uh, i miss home so you know that's that's kind of the the way i see it uh but for india the last one was really i don't think of it as a comedy special you know it, it was more like theater it's mm -hmm. somewhere in there like it, it was it very theatrical yeah 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 so it was it was something else yeah, well, that was we just watched that one this weekend as well um, for India, um, and we had seen the, the uh, a previous set from it, the uh, that Parleji uh, little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Also, um, you said in it that if you can find a foreigner who likes Old Monk, um, that that's this guy right here. That's you guys. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Like Monk. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, nice. But yeah, we really really enjoyed that. I, I, there's some jokes in there where that were just amazing um include i i like offensive humor and so the one that yeah. you kept building up to the mother Teresa, i'm not gonna exactly yeah, yeah, say yeah. what it was uh <laughs> but it was so hilarious um but do you ever write a joke specifically to offend yeah i mean okay look we're, we're also tricksters right so yeah. mm -hmm. you know why i do the mother Teresa joke i do mm -hmm. the mother Teresa joke because the terrorism material is coming in six minutes. Yeah. You know, that's why right. you write that joke. Right. Yeah. It's a trick, right? It's mom, dad, I'm pregnant. What, you're pregnant? No, but I, I crashed the car. You know, it's, it's te it, that, that's exactly what you're doing as a comic. So sometimes yeah. yes. you're writing it just to set, the, just to push the line a little bit so that you can breathe over here, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So for me, there was like a big section about like, uh, the Jallianwala Bagh massacre and like uh, the Nirbhaya gang rape and yeah. 2611 the terror attack and I was like you know you, you can't go from fucking light hearted jokes into that people will just lose their mind you yeah. know if, if you segue from one into the other so you kind of need to push them out a little bit so it doesn't feel that far out yeah. right and shock is a good way to do that Mm -hmm. Well, and one of the, one of our favorite things about you, and I say this to everybody who may not know who you are, or even those who do, you know, you mentioned a moment ago the comics that inspired you, Carlin, Pryor, Murphy, and you you have this very unique trait, and I, I'm wanting to know if it's just innate in who you are, or if you were conscious about this with your stand up. The trait you have is the capacity you can be just as uh, antagonistic as say a George Carlin, who's just gonna punch you in the face with, with truth, but you're, you do it in such a way that you're really likable. You, you, you say things in a way that might offend somebody 
but at the same time they might like you as you're offending them do you get that feedback and is that intentional i think that's low self esteem guys <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just a I'm I'm eager to please and uh love me. No. Uh, I don't know guys. I'll, I'll be honest, like you know, I'm I'm 13 years in, you know. Uh I'm not going to be this comedian next year. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, you know, uh, like Chris Rock, whoever you like. These guys are 25 Bill Burr. They're 25 30 years in. So these yeah. guys know who they are. Mm. The, the Carlin I was a fan of, or the Eddie Murphy, but Eddie Murphy was just a flash in the pan, right? Where he was so early for his time and etc. But Chappelle is an assassin right now because he knows who he is. Yeah, I'm still figuring this shit out. You yeah. know, mm. uh, I do think for me, here's how I put it, right? The more you do this, maybe you don't get funnier, uh, and that's certainly true for for a lot of professions right uh but maybe you get you access your conscience a little bit easier mm. so maybe just more of you falls onto the page mm. you know mm. when mm-hmm. when you're young you're like uh i'm feeling this i'm feeling this about my country i'm feeling this about my nation i'm feeling this about my life or about love uh or i feel insecure but you're like no i have to fucking kill it the open i'm sorry can i cuss on this thing or can i not cuss on <laughs> it said all right fuck yeah <laughs> Right. So, you know, so you have to be like I have to fucking murder this open mic or I have to do this and this bravado there, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. But I think as you get older, you lose some of that bravado and you mm-hmm. lean into some of your weakness, you know? Yeah. Uh mm-hmm. and, and who you are falls onto the page a little bit more. Yeah. So I think that's what I feel better about at least. I'm like, okay, this is more me. Uh mm-hmm. and you know, with for India or with this special especially i'm, mm-hmm. I'm just kind of letting myself be on camera a little bit which is nice yeah it was yeah. it was a, it was a very vulnerable uh set at at many times uh during the the uh the zoom special uh and yeah. which is another one of you, i think your great traits is the fact that you you're willing to be very vulnerable uh on stage um especially now i think it's well, it's really important i mean how much how much of a douchebag would i come off as if, <laughs> if i did like a stand up special in the lockdown and i was like hey everything's amazing i'm feeling it this is oh like, you know you be like fuck this guy i'm never watching anything cuz well, uh, i you know uh, i i didn't even think it would happen like here's how this yeah. zoom special happened right i i was it takes 9 minutes to 10 minutes to warm up a zoom crowd because of how delayed it is and all of that and i was yeah, just yeah. like uh <laughs> hey guys w- what do you want to do when the no- lockdown is over w- what are you thinking about just crowd work warm mm. up stuff and i i kind of underestimated how vulnerable people were yeah. in mm. in early march and how scared we we had like early march feels like 10 years ago doesn't yeah. it yeah uh, it does yeah cuz cuz we had zero information we're just like right. what these people are dying we have to shut down it was just that so the first guy was just like i miss my wife and i miss my kids and i want to cry every day and i was like oh fuck this is not how it work anymore you know right. now now we have to have this conversation mm-hmm. um so when this started becoming a special i was like if i don't participate and if and if i ask them to put themselves out there really put themselves out there and i don't do that myself i'm going to come off as just a disingenuous asshole so i need to take part I mean that that works for some comedians. Ricky Gervais, he's a he's a famous asshole, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, R- Ricky isn't doing like a vulnerable lockdown. That's not that's true. He's not. <laughs> and, and I have a feeling his lockdowns way easier than my yeah, lockdown. Yeah, 100%. In, like, some Hampton Greens in in the UK <laughs> and, and red wine, you and, know. And and he would joke about yeah. that. And it's uh, so funny. But I I did want yeah. cuz all the all your heroes in terms of comedy heroes um that i i've heard about obviously and we we know but in terms of indian stand up I, i know it's relatively new in ter- in in india so what yeah. what's the history of uh like uh, not obviously give me a lecture or anything uh about stand up comedy in india well, who are the, like the big legends that that we we need to know about or are there any besides yourself so here's here's what you need to know about indian stand up right hmm? english is very new if you're doing english stand up it's very very new yeah If you're looking for Hindi stand up, the world is your oyster. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that's 3000 years old. Gotcha. Right? Uh the the tradition the, there's this community called the Bhairupiyas and Bhairupiyas were like wandering jesters. 
and the tradition of of entering a king's palace and speaking truth to power and making fun of the king in front of his court and that's like an indian tradition that like we kind of came up with that you right. know many many years ago uh and so we used to do it through poetry so in india you have something called hasya kavis which are sort of comedic poets that do satire about politics and leadership in the world you live in uh-huh. so that's our original sort of form of stand up you know because the core emotion is the same gotcha. but now these guys like there's so many hindi comics that yep. are just amazing right and and there's i think there's a, a good i want to say like 100 or 150 like professional english comics as well mm. we're in a good place man yeah. you know If we can just stop yeah. getting arrested and threatened and all of that stuff, that would be yeah, nice. That'd be that nice. That would be nice. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah we yeah. we've recently been introduced. We've been we've been seeing a lot more uh, stand-up comics, and they're in Hindi. And we have some beautiful people who are part of our family that that sub those, and they've been magnificent yeah. in contextualizing some things for us. Uh, and, and so we we are starting to touch into that. Uh, if you you were your history of being both a thespian and an actor. Uh, Robin Williams had that exact same background and and a question was posed to Robin I want to pose to you. Okay, push comes the shove, you have to make a decision. For the rest of your life, you could do work as an actor or you could do work in in stand up. Do you have a preference between one or the other? Um can I give you a really long answer and then I'll answer it. Is that okay? Absolutely. All right, cool. Uh so here's why I like a healthy balance of both. Uh stand up is humble. it's democratic it's instant but it's solitary stand up is a very lonely profession mm-hmm. you know and that's why you see a lot of big comics just very lonely and and get kind of fucked up because they is just out there by themselves you know 52 weeks in a year and i couldn't do that i couldn't do like airport hotel airport hotel for 52 weeks a year sometimes it's nice to collaborate and sometimes it's nice to sponge from people because you're not going to evolve as an artist unless you sponge right and until you absorb human life stories you're not going to grow your mm-hmm. paradigm of thought then becomes airport hotel is my car nice is my sweet nice and nobody wants to hear from that guy right mm-hmm. but at the same time i couldn't hang out with actors and talk about protein shakes and push ups for the, the entire year you know because that <laughs> you know like i i just can't do that i like my insecure brethren um yeah. so i i don't know if i could choose like yeah. the best way i'll describe it to you is I did a show I think it was 2 years ago called Whiskey Cavalier mm-hmm. right and it was an ABC show yeah. right and we shot the show in Prague um so I was just living in Prague for 4 months and there is or at least I thought there was zero stand up in Prague right and this is uh you know it's 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 a big american network production which and these things are large right so there's you have a 300 person crew you know the, the Lauren and Scott a big A list like American TV people you know it, it was a big deal and it was a big opportunity for me but you know you, you kind of hanging out with actors all day long for like 4 months and then somebody's like there's an open mic that happens and i found this this youth hostel called the check in literally the check in <laughs> nice in, right nice yeah. on a tuesday night that does 30 people stand up right just for 30 people in this basement of a youth hostel and i just kind of went in there and i was like oh ugly insecure people like i miss my <laughs> dad i'm home <laughs> and, yeah i'm home uh so then i would do like 13 hour shoots at whiskey cavalier but i was just i would run to the check in every single night and here's what's cool about that like i have to give i have to shout out to the the comics there because you know it's early there it's early days in in prague for stand up right so it's it's a lot of like what is up with there the babies like you know a lot of that <laughs> shit uh, and, and and there was you know there's maybe 30 comics and mm-hmm. a lot of them are like american expats etc and i i went in and i was like can i do 7 minutes or 8 minutes and they're like you're the netflix special guy right and i'm like yeah they're like Yeah, come on. So <laughs> then I did seven minutes, and the next time I came back, they're like, "Hey, man, could you do twelve?" Uh, and I was like, "What do you mean?" And they're like, "Could you please do twelve? We just want to watch you do twelve, right?" And so over the course of three months that I did this, 
these local comics started to give up their stage time. Oh dang. Wow. On a Tuesday night so that they could watch me develop a set. Oh, that's beautiful. Right? Yeah. yeah. Because they were like, you know, he's I, I say this with no arrogance, but he's a pro, right? right. And and we want to watch how a set is developed. Yeah. yeah. And so because because of them I wrote an hour and a half of material in 3 months, right? Dang. And then these guys who were local comics would one of them would open for me, but the rest of them would do security, they would sell tickets, they would work the bar, and and then you know we were we were ending up the night at like 95 people, 150 people in this tiny basement jam pack. And I'm hoping God bless that's still a room now. You know, I, I'm yeah. hoping that's a room where but like I was just amazed. They were like it is more important to see you write new jokes Then right. it is for me to write new jokes, and I don't think LA comics, Mumbai comics, Delhi comics, New York comics, nobody's doing that shit for you. No, anywhere. No, the they they were back when the Comedy Store was born. That crew was doing it that way, but yeah, not yeah. not today. Yeah, mm, that's yeah. that's awesome. That's crazy. That's an awesome story. Yeah. Um, we we watched one of your when when COVID started happening and you started doing more online stuff. We saw your Shakespeare. uh rant mm-hmm. uh your yeah. love for shakespeare we're both big fans of shakespeare rick especially so he was a theater right. teacher he was my theater teacher um he actually did your challenge as well um so he's expecting a prize from you oh nice uh, <laughs> I, i apologize i will uh, i will talk to black dog whiskey and make sure that happens so, all right but it, anyway um but where uh did your love for shakespeare come from the doing your your stuff at uh the college or where did that the love for shakespeare come in yeah so fun fact about me i was going to just I, i just wanted to be a drama professor that was my big thing like i had a mentor his name was ivan davidson at at knox college and i was like you know this is the life you eight months a year an office that is you know floor to ceiling books you read all day you you get off by 3 p.m. and then you do rehearsals at night and you travel and take sabbaticals that's a pretty good life you'll never be rich but you see the world and you learn so that was my big thing and then when i graduated from knox i did this short program in boston and and then after that i got accepted to the alabama shakespeare festival oh which is uh, in montgomery alabama uh, where there is one other brown person i know cuz we met in a parking lot and hugged each other <laughs> without context right um, yep and then then i dropped out uh because i met a girl and and wanted to go back to india but yeah yeah i was going i was going to teach shakespeare that was my thing i would have done the alabama shakespeare festival done an mfa and then just been a a drama professor that was my career well and i think something else people don't may not know is the fact that they know your name they know you as stand up they know that you wear many hats that you're an actor you're a writer you're a musician uh i don't think a lot of people are aware of of weird ass comedy and and your consultancy can you tell us a little bit about that Yeah man uh, it's uh what it is is it's 17 people and, and I talk to them and they pretend like I make sense I think that's basically what the company is, is, is right? <laughs> it's like I uh, I think I'm paying 17 people to make sure I don't go insane like that's basically what this Got is it. where like they all kind of sit in meetings and go yeah and then then I leave the room and they're like this guy's fucking insane and <laughs> find new jobs you know that's the like th- that's what happened with this right with this special uh you know they i was like okay we're going to put out a special and i i want to be inclusive so i want everybody to be able to donate and not everybody has a netflix membership or an amazon membership or you know so let's make this open to everyone and they're like cool so youtube and i was like no nah, and we're going to make our own website release thing and they were like yeah uh, and then they went out to the other room and they're like he wants to launch a mini netflix he's fucking insane <laughs> you know right, right. <laughs> this man is is gone crazy but touch what it's worth so far um no we, we were making three shows for different platforms we're going to make a movie next year uh we produced two of my netflix specials awesome uh, we do all of my world tours you know so we're like a 17 person comedy company that's what we do mm. and we started out just kind of handling my stuff but now three shows i'm not in any of them i'm just kind of creative director on them and i get to you know show run them a little bit so yeah cool that's awesome awesome uh off topic you're a, you're a potterhead uh correct yes 
Yeah. Yes. Uh, first of all, what's your what house are you in? I want to say, okay, I I would be a Gryffindor for swag, but uh, I'd be a Hufflepuff because I like the underdogs. You know what I mean? So that's. Have you yeah, taken no the one, test? No, no, I haven't taken the test. Oh no, my no. god! <laughs> no, I, I actually think you're you're a Slytherin. Honestly, I think you're a Slytherin. That's because really? that's because he's Slytherin. Yeah, I'm a Slytherin. So <laughs> I'm a Hufflepuff. So anyways, no. uh, we 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 saw one of your your. Uh, I know you've read them all, and we saw your your video that you did the trivia with and everything. Yeah. Um, who is the most annoying character in Harry Potter? Just a random question I wanted to give you. Uh, I would say it's it is fucking what's his name? Harry Percy. Potter. Oh, Percy. Oh, Percy. Oh, yeah, Percy. Uh, <laughs> Especially and, and, in the books. Then, you know, because just blah, just has nothing to contribute to plot, wisdom, nothing. Uh, and then I want to say, what was her name? Parvati Patil or? Padma Patil, the, the Indian girl in uh, Harry Potter. Uh, but, but yeah, her last name was Patel. Yeah, Patel. Yeah. Yeah. So just because, how the fuck are you so Indian and you don't <laughs> teach this boy anything? You know, what I mean? like, you're smarter than any. Like, how are you smarter than everybody in this movie and this book? And that never shows up. That is. Yeah. Uh, that's funny. Uh, anyways, that's uh, that's good. But I uh, back to relevant stuff. Uh, that's not just me. Um, is is there you were kind of saying about your mother Teresa joke is there anything that you actually can't joke about you think as a comedian what's your take on that uh here's my take how about I'll do the joke mm -hmm. and you let me know you know how about that yeah like, how I about feel like that? that's yeah. a fair system you know yeah. uh because I, I do feel like you know 13 years in my audience is broad enough Mm -hmm. Where I'm catching different opinions, right? It's mm -hmm. different if you're like, you know, if you're if you're like cute boy comedian, or if you're like angry right wing comedian, or if you're like yeah comedian, you know, it, dude like alpha male comedian, etc. Then you you often catch like one paradigm of thought and their moral compass. But I I feel like I'm broad enough where I can crack a joke and I can have like full disclosure with my audience, and they're like, no, nah, not cool, and I'm like, okay. Uh, I'm still gonna do it, but I'll rewrite it a little bit, or I'll I'll figure it out. You know, yeah. right. uh, that's. But yeah, there's nothing I wouldn't try. Mm. You know, uh, it, it would be. I mean, in an ideal universe, you want like comedians say shit like you should punch up at all times, right? People mm. who have more power than you do. Right. But who the fuck gets to decide who has more power than you do? That's such a relative thing. Like intersectionality is such a. Like I once did a bit on um, on feminism. Mm -hmm. I think maybe the first Netflix special or the second Netflix special, and I was I was just like, okay, I can't mansplain feminism, mm -hmm. right? And I and I I can't wax eloquent about it either. So I ended up talking to I'm I'm like, okay, let me talk to feminists, right? So let me sit down and talk to feminists, and I spoke to ten, and none of them said the same thing. Mm -hmm. Literally, it yeah. was it was ten different versions of feminism, mm -hmm. and so then eventually the bit had to become I don't know how to be a feminist, but I'm trying. Mm -hmm. right? Yes, uh, and that's what the bit ended up becoming. But I just kind of trust my audience in that sense. Yeah, you know, like I was able to get ten different things from ten different audience members. Yeah, right. Which is which is obviously why you test the things you said you do like. 80 presentations and not just to hone in what you need to do for time and making sure you know it and it's under your skin but you're you're yeah. getting feedback from your audience before you put that up on a netflix special yeah i mean like I'll, I'll do this thing where like for india for instance we took over a comedy club called the kaku club in in india and i think i did like 35 nights mm. at this club right which I mean, the nice thing is it's like five minutes away from my house. So I could just walk in and, and, and do a thing. But those were like two hour shows where literally one hour is just talking to audience members saying, come on now, you know, this 80 of us be real. Tell me what you think. Let's have a conversation. And then that leads to something, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, you, so it doesn't cost <laughs> as much. Your, your phones are taken away. You kind of become part of this experience where we just talk for mm -hmm. a while. 
Yeah, and, and, and for India, it was, it was really brilliant, I thought, how you kind of, every single time you did a joke that probably white people wouldn't understand, you, you kind of <laughs> yeah. spotlighted them. them and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought yeah. it was genius. Do you, do you mean, ever write jokes um, with the intent uh, that it's universally um, going to be understood? Like, no, I, yeah. you know, I, I don't feel like we live in that world anymore. Like, yeah. you know, the, the old adage that Americans don't know anything about the world, that's mm -hmm. fucking gone. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you guys know more than you ever have. And I think, by the way, post this pandemic, you guys really need to keep an eye out on what's happening in the rest of the world. You know, yeah. just in terms of, you know, I, I, I think the big lesson for America in this pandemic is that you don't exist alone on yep. the planet. And that, that's you know, absolutely right. It's going to take the Oxford vaccine and the China friendship and the, you know, it's all going to have to come together yep. uh, to do this. So, you know, I think that's, so here's what's weird. Uh, my first Netflix special, I felt it was a little pandering, hmm. you know, it was a little, Hey, breakfast cereal, gun control. These are things you like, right? I'm going to now talk about them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, the more I kind of travel, and that that special enabled me to go on a world tour. So when that special came out and it and it kind of exploded, I got to go to like 25 countries across mm. the world. Mm. And that's when I kind of realized you need to be authentic and you need to have an originally Indian story. And like people in Norway and people in Alabama want to hear not about airline food and not about gun control, but take me somewhere I haven't been before. Yeah. And then you're interesting, right? Yes, um, and I think that was that's probably my favorite thing about your most your most recent one, the the for India, and the way that you had that segment of the folks and you lit them up, and then you projected yeah. the images on the back wall. It it was for us who uh, are in love with India and artistry. I felt like that is the most brilliant way for you, the most noticeable Indian stand-up comic, to be bridging this gap the way we love to see it seen. You were celebrating your heritage and explaining it in a way that didn't bring it down in any way so that it became this universal connection. It was a beautiful blending of both in that special. Mm -hmm. I think so, because also, you know, we either get, like, uh, fetishized as Indians, you know, mm -hmm. where, like, it's, man, why is it either crazy rich Asians or slumdog millionaire. Right. You know, are there right. two versions of, you know, where's like, I've, I've never seen a character from Bombay or from Delhi drink, smoke, have sex and fuck up, you know, right. uh, it's, it's either they have nothing and they, 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 they traveled somewhere with one suitcase. Everybody only has one fucking suitcase. Like, have you <laughs> met a real Indian person? You know, we have nine suitcases at all times. Like, okay, check this out. Uh, have you seen Indian matchmaking on Netflix? No, we've heard about it. We've, we've right. purposefully so, waited to see if we'd watch it together on the channel. <laughs> so, here's why that show is so talked about. It's cringy and it's a lot of our skeletons coming out of the closet, but it's real Indian people. Mm -hmm. who are successful and who are driven and who are flawed, you know what I mean? And, and who have prejudice and who have preferences. We're not just eager to please, happy to be here or fucking shooting each other. Yeah. You know, we're just, there's a normal to, to Indian on that show, which is, you know, fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've heard a lot about it. Well, I want to thank you so much for, for talking to us, man. Uh, I want to end it off on a, uh, on a, on a, Rapid fire kind of thing. Stupid mm -hmm. questions. Um, just uh, answer to the best of your ability. Uh, coffee or chai? Uh, uh, in a normal world, chai. In a pandemic, coffee. <laughs> That's the best way I can, gotcha. I can put that. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, favorite alcoholic beverage if you drink alcohol? I don't know if you do. Cider. I cider? Love cider. Like um, a cider beer? Yeah, like a like a an apple cider or a peach cider. I'm a girl, completely without that. That's why I'm, I'm I'm absolutely a giddy lady when it comes to alcohol. I do not touch hard alcohol, so it's like beer, cider, wine. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, favorite Hollywood film? Young Frankenstein, Mel Brooks. Dang, oh, good nice, choice. good choice. Yeah. Gotta love uh, Mel Brooks. Love Mel still Brooks. Still holds up. Black yeah. and white, oh, but still sure holds up. Yes, it yeah. does. 
Yeah, Gene yeah. Wilder. It's amazing. Favorite Indian film, any region? Uh, there's a recent one. Well, not recent, but it's called Zindagi Na Mile Dobara. Which yes. is mm -hmm. set in Spain, Zoya Akhtar, Farhan Akhtar, uh, and Rithik and stuff. It's just, oh yeah. Oh, you know, it's one of those movies that I was, I was like, ah, I wish I was in that movie. You know? Y yeah, we, uh, we watched that film. Uh, and I can't pronounce Indian names worth shit, so I just call it the Deborah movie because that's all I could. That's what I thought it was. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> that's yeah. as good Everybody as I could asks have done. Us, What's the Deborah movie? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fa favorite comedian. Man, uh, three. Can I say three? Because they yes. died. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh. Carlin for fearlessness, George Carlin. Mm -hmm. um, Chappelle for his ability to articulate the times that you live in. Mm -hmm. You know, like, yeah. it, it, you kind of feel like, let's just take 2019 and give it to Chappelle and he'll do something with it. Yeah. You know, right, right. And I like that. Uh, and Richard Pryor for taking your pain and turning into comedy. You know, just being completely authentic to your life story. Yeah. Well so said. those three for that reason. Uh, favorite Shakespeare? Titus Andronicus. Uh, mm, that's, interesting. That's like his Pulp Fiction, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. That's where Shakespeare was just you know, angry that week. So, <laughs> I like that. Uh, favorite uh, Hollywood actor? Christopher Walken. Oh, nice. Uh, just because he... He was just like, fuck it, this is how I speak. You know? <laughs> like, like, and I love that yeah. about him. Like, you know, if the line is, all right, we can do this easy or we can do this real easy. <laughs> He'd just be like, we can do this easy. Or we can do, do this, this real easy. easy. And everybody's like, <laughs> you know, More and he's like, this is me. <laughs> yeah. And a favorite Indian actor besides yourself? <laughs> uh, It'd be funny if you said yourself. I want to say... For now, uh, Nawaz, I like Nawaz. I like everything oh, yeah. that Nawaz does. Yes. Uh, and Vidya Balan. I love Vidya mm -hmm. Balan. Yeah, yes. so, we do too. Yeah. And, your, and your favorite book? Uh, this is a tough one. It's a tie. Um, it's a three way tie. Can I okay. say that? Yeah, yeah. of course. Yes. Uh, Tuesdays with Maury. I like that. Uh, it by Stephen King. Which oh, is the nice. movie. I like that. Uh, and then there's a, a book by Heyman Sunim, which is called The Things You Can See When You Slow Down. Uh, mm. And that's, you know, because I, I haven't slowed down in a decade. Yeah. So that's one of my favorite books. Cool. Well, thank you so much uh, for doing that. I want to encourage everybody watching to uh, go watch Veerdasha Special. The link is in the description below. Go check it out. Uh, give to those charities and support Veerdasha. I want to thank you for coming on. We, it was a pleasure talking to you. It's always a pleasure watching your, your your set. We think you're one of the most hilarious people alive, and one of the smartest hilarious people alive as well. So, Guys, I just want to thank you for the support, and also uh, thank you for getting me more YouTube views than I can. <laughs> <on my own. laughs> so thank you for that. My yeah. YouTube is useless. So I, don't, don't think I don't know that and don't think I don't appreciate that. I very much do realize that many people have discovered my content because of your reaction. So I appreciate that deeply. Thank you. you. Yeah. So. Truly our pleasure. We've, we've enjoyed you and really believe and wish you the, most, the best of success because not only is what Corbin said true, but we're so passionate about what we talked about earlier, getting rid of these, these differentiations and bridging the gap of artistry between all of the countries in India and Hollywood and Bollywood. And you're perfectly positioned right now, and we're rooting for you to continue doing what you do with your artistry because you have your hand in both worlds and we wanna see them succeed in both places and bridge that gap. So thank you for doing what you do. Hey, listen, guys, when I get canceled in three years, I'm counting on the two of you, all right? That's, that's basically what We'll I'm be saying. here. Always we'll welcome. For you. We're all getting canceled. And when it happens to, let's just be there for each other whenever Absolutely. we individually get canceled. All right? 100%. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, okay. man. All Thank the best. So stay safe. Take care of yourself. Stay safe, guys. All right? You too. Stay Thanks. Safe. Right. Have a good one, man. Bye-bye.